So in the very early stages, I could have earned more money by doing more technical work myself, but I didn't, I invested in growing my team. personal branding element, the vein of talent. Yep. And so they said, he's a client, and then I started. Oh, hey! Oh, is this a mama? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, oh my God. Hey, how are you? How are you? Oh my God. Good to see you. How are you? Oh, thanks. Good. You, um, you don't look tired at all. Yeah, yeah, I actually kind of want to sleep. Instagram's on it. Yeah, it's good. Oh my God. How's it going? Tell me. Thank you for the, um, the, uh, yeah. the legs. I'm like, is it an octopus? I don't want to bug you. I just no, no. Do you want to sit down? Yeah, please. Please. Uh, I saw this so earlier for right lunch. Here, so. Oh. Yeah, we have a good How's look. Yeah. It's great. I love your, I love that. It's so gorgeous. Do you know this was $40? Really? Really? Yes. At H&M? Um, at Zara. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I I've only just been introduced to Zara, <laughs> yeah. so I, I may have gone a little bit crazy Zara's in the last amazing. two weeks. Like, yeah. And I like your collared shirt. Yes, thank you. Thank <sighs> <Eight> you <of> them. <laughs> right. Right. So uh, anyway, I don't want to take up time, but it was good. Was it awesome? Yes. Okay. Yeah, give me a, give me a Okay, love you guys. Good to see you, babe. Uh, <laughs> uh, before you were in business, though, like what was going on in Australia? Oh, before I was in, so I started my business in Australia 11 years ago. Yep. Uh, yeah, 11 years ago, it was 11 years ago in August. And so you want to go like prior to me starting business? Yeah, I just, I just want to know how, the, how like, it came about. Yeah, only because I'm, I'm going to be starting a podcast in a, in a little while called the Flashpoint Podcast. Like, Flashpoint is the lowest, or is the temperature that fire can start with an ignition. So basically, Flashpoint of fuel or vapor or whatever. So there's always a flashpoint like in all of our lives, like something. You yeah. Know, I saw that in your thing. You said, I haven't gone to university. I, I went yeah. to university a couple of times or three times. Or Dropped out three right? times, yeah. So I'm like, okay, so what the hell happened? There's something where you're like, I'm fucking doing this on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years ago. Yeah. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I love the idea of that podcast, by the way. <laughs> I love that. Good. Um, <laughs> so, so I'd be, I was in the HR industry. So I went from being a recruiter. And back then, recruitment was a very dynamic career. I don't know what it's like now so much, but you know, you you had to do everything. You, I basically, my first day was like, okay, here's your desk. There was no social media then. There was no seek. There was no <laughs> seek. <laughs> and um, and it was like, off you go. And I learned everything. So I learned sales. I learned time management. I learned self management. I learned relationship building. Like sort of everything that you need to know. And I learned how to present myself and just so much and then I moved out of Brooklyn and I went into internal HR and I was so overwhelmed uh, underwhelmed by the whole industry I was like who are these people there was no commerciality um, everything was slow everything was sort of this victim oh, I can't make a difference the CEOs won't listen to me and I was like this is the most undynamic industry I've ever known and so I, I went into a few different roles and I and I started to realize that if I was to succeed, it, to be six, to to make HR a valuable source in an organisation, you had to work for, you had to think about the owners, not the employees, actually. Yeah. So you had to think, what is this business trying to achieve? Because ultimately, if the business isn't successful, it doesn't matter about the employees, yep. because there won't be any jobs for them. And I think that HR is, was, well, in my experience, was look after the people and be there for them and let's pat their back and let's... And I was like, you know what? We need a business to be successful here. <laughs> so I quickly learned that I'm working for the owner and I need to help them build a thriving business and then we can actually do some cool stuff from a people perspective and we can create a great environment and we can, you know, focus on performance and all of those sorts of things. So I learned that, but I would go out into sort of industry networks because as I said I dropped out of university so I wasn't really qualified I had no experience and so I'd go out to the industry to network with other people and I was like this is so uninspiring anyway 
I, and I was just like, I'm not, these people are just, like, what is this? I, I just want to interrupt because I was very uninspired my last few years and, and there's a certain threshold I think that we all have of being uninspired when you have like a drive in you where yeah. you recognize that something needs to change where you just like, forget it. Yeah. Like, that is such a mitigating factor in a lot of things I do and the people I meet. Like, I'm already like talking to you, I'm like, this is great. But I can have a conversation with someone else I meet on LinkedIn tomorrow and I can be uninspired and it might be the end of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but when it comes to work or the purpose of what you're trying to do, if it's not like these people you look up to are going to be inspired by, then it's a wrap. I, I totally agree with you. And so I went into this business, there was 100, 100 staff and I was the first time that they'd brought a HR person in. So it was basically a kind of staff, you know, five different departments, heads of departments, and I came in and I was responsible for ensuring that there was strong HR practice and that, you know, the leaders knew how to do their job and the employees, blah, blah, blah. And what I realised was that each, each division, each employee's experience was dependent on the, the skills of the leader of that division. And all the leaders of the divisions had worked their way up and had never been taught to be leaders. And I remember looking at them and going, these guys are so lucky that this business had, had, has brought in my role because really they have no idea what they're doing. And then I looked at them and thought, these divisions are just like a whole group of small businesses. So what do the small business owners do that can't afford to bring in my role, can't afford to use recruiters? So they're like stuffing it up and their employees would be having a pretty bad experience. So I went, I'm going to start a business where I work specifically for small to medium business, doing everything to do with their people, and I'm going to do it commercially. I'm going to focus on how do we grow your business through your people. This is not about creating fluffy little workplaces where we all, uh, you know, just everything's nice. Yeah, this exactly. is about like, let's be serious. And I literally started it from my spare bedroom. Um, no money, I didn't know anyone, I had a three month old baby and it was the start of the GFC. And I did not see any of that as a problem. Because luckily I didn't have any coaches around me at the time to tell me that uh, you don't have anything to start a business. So I, I was like, I've got this vision, I'm gonna become an international, I'm gonna have, have, have an international business and I'm gonna take over the world. And I was sitting in my spare bedroom with a three month old baby, no degree, no contacts, no family, and a GFC, and I was like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Yep. And the naivety was actually my biggest gift. I love this. So, so, so happy. This is, <laughs> Give uh, me a hug. Yes, of course. <laughs> Yeah, so good. So good. I'm really looking forward to talking so much more. Oh my god, my hands are like, I can't even. I can't <laughs> Put even, them in your jacket, put them in your scarf. Oh, yeah, I, I, was I, was I was like, I know. What are you thinking of talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like shut part. up, <laughs> you two. <do." laughs> <laughs> but I like, saw you starting to like, shake it like, it's like they just yeah. aren't going to stop talking, are they? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be here till like three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. See you. Care. Oh, so good to meet you. <laughs> loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Bye, guys. See you. See you, man. Nice to meet you. Okay, so we are. So it's going to pick us up there, but it's like eight minutes away. Do you reckon we should try and get a cab? Do you think it'd be easier to get a cab? No. Or should we get a? Should we? We'll just wait for this guy. It's nine uh, minutes no, away. I would definitely wait for it. Oh yeah, I can turn around this way. Oh Actually, cool, yeah, I really want to get some away. good cab yeah. stuff. Loving the, um, like the community that I'm building here now. It's like, and I think heaps of it have come from Vayner. Actually. You know, like yeah. Rich became because I went to a thing that Claude was speaking at. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you guys from Ed, which yeah. who I met through 4Ds tonight's 4Ds. Um, a guy from Australia who came over, Mark, who we met with, who we like had that catch up with at Vayner. I met him through an event that he's doing with Claude. Um, 
sign. Do you know how someone asked me today when I plan to retire? And I was like, Who is that? Oh, this um, very nice lady I met with. And I was just talking about what I was come here to do. And she said, So, you know, what's like, what does. I don't know what does success look like or what how do you want things to look in a year from now or whatever or one to three years from now so I answered that question and then she said and so when do you when do you want to retire and I, I was just like I'm like just uh, like I feel like yeah, I'm I feel like it's like you my my, my first Australia. week of school yeah. <laughs> and it's like and what college are you gonna go to <laughs> <laughs> well you know like I was just like I'm not planning on retiring. Like I'm literally feel like I'm just starting my life again. It was such a like such a random question that I just was so far from my um like my headspace. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you're just like I'm not even thinking about that. Yeah. I was like, what? Maybe New York's aging me. <laughs> 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 yeah.